Well, good morning church welcome and to today's devotion thanks for joining us in this time together i uh, really pray that god through his spirit would minister to your hearts as we share together that you would hear his voice ministering to you this morning um, i'm going to read from luke chapter 7 <clears throat> if you want to join me there this is a passage that i read as part of my New Testament readings um, a few weeks ago now but uh, it's a passage that I've been thinking about uh, from time to time uh, quite often really over it and just mulling over what happened here and, and relating it to my own life and so I just want to share it with you from Luke chapter 7 verses 11 through to 17 I'm going to read the verses to you and then just leave you with a couple of thoughts to maybe meditate upon and consider in the, in this passage it's the the story of Jesus raising the son of the widow of Nain and verse 11 says now it happened the day after this is after the uh, healing of the centurion's servant that he went into a city called Nain and many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd and when he came near the gate of the city behold a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came and he touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak and he presented him to his mother then fear came upon all and they glorified God saying a great prophet has risen among us and God has visited his people and this report about him went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region and it's a, a beautiful account that just reminds us of the care compassion and love of, of Jesus towards each one of us if you like it's a story of two processions as a a group of people following Jesus probably full of joy and gladness and, and wondering what he will teach them what he might do amongst them that day and that procession of people meets a totally different procession the widow of Nain who has just lost her son and her family and friends in mourning with them and, and the, the difference between the two groups would be marked and and it's a and that in itself is is a reminder to us that when we bring Jesus into a situation everything changes when Jesus is brought into that situation and and I just want to I want to give you four points really just to think about and and the first thing that just really struck me was that everything Jesus does was with a purpose there were no accidents in the life and ministry of Jesus he went to Nain deliberately knowing that there was a widow in pain who had lost her son and he went with the purpose of of healing of raising the son from the dead and giving him back to his mother and and this is really important you know he didn't just suddenly appear at Nain and find wow there's a major problem here I need to fix this today but Jesus came deliberately to bring healing to demonstrate his compassion towards this woman who was broken she'd already lost her husband a son now had died they were carrying the coffin to complete the funeral the, the top was open just a real picture of, of the pain and the grief and the loss that the family was suffering 
But Jesus came into that situation deliberately to bring healing and compassion. Secondly, he, the, the timing of Jesus' arrival strikes me so often when we read of the ministry of Jesus. He came just as that procession. He arrived just as the procession would be passing by that crossroads to minister to the woman. God's timing is, is perfect in our lives. He knows exactly the moment and he steps in and he's there when things happen to us, when challenges come before us, when things don't work out as we would hope they would do. Jesus' timing is perfect as he comes alongside us and ministers to us and brings his presence, his power, his love, his compassion into that situation. So we've three things here. One, Jesus went there deliberately with a purpose. It reminds me that that very thought of, of when Jesus went to the, the woman at, at Samaria at the well at Sychar. And, and John 4 verse says, it says that Jesus needed to go through Samaria. He was leaving Judea to go to Galilee, but he needed to go to Samaria because there was a woman there whose life he was going to transform and he went to just the place where she would be this is our God this is Jesus his eyes are upon us he watches over us he sees everything that is taking place in our lives and is there just at the point when we need him and the things he allows he allows that he might teach us and guide us and help us to grow in him through those things beautiful things and and the outcome was the, that God was glorified and and, and when Jesus is working in, in our lives and you see time and time again you read at the miracles that Jesus wrought whether he was in the temple whether he was here in the street as Jesus ministered the people were pointed to God and glorified him and that's what our lives and our ministries and our service for the Lord are all meant to do to point people to Jesus because it's he alone who saves it's he alone who can heal it's he who alone who sets free the captive breaks the chains that can that bind people only God can do that and, and in our service in our lives for him we want to point as Jesus did to God and give glory and honour and praise to him through our ministry and, and as I as I share this with you this morning you know just from a personal testimony point of view many of you know uh, the challenges that my family have faced over the last couple of the months because I suffered the cardiac arrest when I was out running home and 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 this just mirrors what the Lord did for us as a family how he was there exactly at my point of need and how he brought to the situation someone who was skilled in what I needed CPR at that moment in time and how that person helped keep me alive until the ambulance came and, and I was taken to the hospital his compassion abounded, particularly to my family. You know, my, I was out of everything and I have no memories of, of what happened that day. But God's compassion towards Diane and, and, and my children and, and my sister who was there, just amazing. And his continued love and care for us through this time um, just continues to astound me. And, and I, I've seen God through the time that I've been through in, 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 in new, new ways and, and being so encouraged and blessed by him. And, you know, as I tell you what he's done for me, I know his heart is towards each one of you. It might be in a different way, but his love, his compassion, his care is just the same. 
And I'm just going to close with, with two scriptures. You'll have heard me quote these often before, but it, it just kind of sums up what we're saying. And the first one is from Exodus 3, verses 7 and 8, when God met Moses at the burning bush. And the Lord said to Moses, it says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. God says, I have seen, I have heard, and I know. And then he goes on to say, So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and a large land that is flowing with milk and honey. And God says that to each one of us today. I see where you are. I hear your cries to me. I know how you feel in your hearts. And I'm here to deliver you, to bring you out of trial into the joy of the Lord Jesus. And Ephesians 3.20 says this, it says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church through Christ Jesus. The power of God that works within us is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Let me just as encourage you, meditate on these things. Allow to sink into your heart the certainty of the power of God that dwells within you, of the heart of God towards you, of his eyes that are over you, his ears that hear you, his heart that knows all that you're facing. And put your trust in him today and rejoice in him today. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye.